How's it going mountain bikers? In today's video we are going to be talking about two millimeter brake rotors. What they are, how they work, how they could benefit you, and maybe if you should use them or maybe if you shouldn't, or maybe you don't need to. Uh, for today's sample we have the new Galfer Disc Shark or Disc Wave Shark disc wave brake rotor so i've been using two millimeter rotors uh for probably a couple seasons now we'll go over the reasons why but this is one of the latest ones to come out by galfer um, it's going to have a really unique design with like these teeth to kind of act as like heat sink um, and then all of the, with all their uh, cuts holes cut out and all their um little gaps um, that they've laser cut out there so um, we'll take a look at that and then also, like you saw in the beginning of the video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about these guys. These are the MTX brake pads. I have both the gold and the red and I've actually used these before, uh, but whenever I put new rotors on I like to pair them with fresh brake pads. So we'll talk about these a little bit at the end. So what is a 2mm uh, braking rotor? Well essentially it's just a rotor that is a little bit thicker. So here I have a Shimano Ice Tech rotor. Uh, these traditionally are about 1.8 millimeters thick. And on sample, we have the Galfer Disc Wave Shark. And basically, if you were to take a set of measuring calipers and you were to measure the thickness, these would simply just be thicker than, let's say, this Shimano. Now, is that necessarily better? Well, I wouldn't say so. Uh, but in certain applications or for certain people, it just might. So how do thicker rotors improve your braking? Well, let's talk, let's think about what they are. It's just a thicker disc rotor. So there's more material. There is just more metal to this than let's say a thinner rotor. So if you think about if you were to take a stove and you were to put, uh, set the temperature settings to medium, it will take a larger pan longer to heat up to your operating temp than it would a smaller pan just because there is either just less pan to heat up in a smaller pan and there's more pan to heat up with a bigger pan so if you apply that to this it just means that these rotors are um, able to withstand I guess high heats a little bit better um, or take longer to really reach those levels of heat that could start uh, having negative effects on your braking system. And what are those negative effects? So with more heat, it's going to heat up your oil inside your braking system to a level to where it is not optimally working within your lever or your caliper, mostly by the caliper because that's where all the heat is. So when that oil heats up to a certain temp, it's going to start um, not behaving the same way as it's uh, lubricating and going through your pistons and pushing and you're gonna get bubbles and sometimes. So having a system that mitigates building up heat as fast uh, is going to help your braking system operate better for longer periods of time. Now why Shimano hasn't jumped on to the two millimeter train quite yet is they uh, are a believer in their ice tech system. And I think we should because a lot of the World Cup downhill guys still run the Shimano Ice Tech and you know perform just fine. Again, they're probably not on the brakes as much as we are, but the fact that World Cup downhill guys are still using this rotor means, again, the two millimeter, it makes sense in science, but it's not necessarily what you need um, just because it's the newest trend going on. All right, so one thing that I want to talk about is surface area and this is something that i've seen in comments about maybe some confusion about uh, when a company says they have drilled a lot of holes in the braking surface to increase surface area and it seems like well you're removing material so you're actually having less surface area well not necessarily true so if you think about one of these tiny holes whenever you punch through and you create a hole, you have then created that whole inner diameter, which is more surface area than uh, would have been existing if you just had left the each side of the hole uh, on the braking surface. So yes, it does optically look like you're removing braking surface, but 
you are creating more surface area when you're punching through these holes and exposing that inner, inner diameter. And what does that do for a rotor? Uh, it, well, for one, it's gonna help create friction. Um, each of these little edges is going to help uh, grab your brake pad a little bit better. Um, and it's gonna allow for air to infiltrate, I guess, the meat of the rotor um, and help cool that down the best that it can. All right, enough about rotors. Let's talk about these MTX brake pads. Um, again, I've been using these uh, with my Shimano's for the past season. I've been really impressed with them. They have a very short break-in period, lots of power. I would dare to say that with a combination of uh, these pads and any rotor that I've been running previously, um, they probably match the all-out power of my old trick stuff uh, Duratissima brakes. Um, now there are some benefits to the trick stuff brakes that still I believe are some of the best amongst other brakes, but um, in terms of all-out power, I do believe you can achieve that with MTX brake pads. Now the red pads are going to be kind of their standard pad per se, their everyday pad. Probably will work best for most people, trail riders, um, lighter riders, and uh, have good uh, long-lasting life with these. The gold is their, their big guy. This is meant to stop people um, as fast as possible. And the reason why I have two is I have the gold in the rear and I have the red up front. Um, that's just kind of how I run this combo. Uh, really quiet. I haven't had a whole lot of braking noise with them, um, at least with the way that I have my brakes set up. So I'm really meticulous in how I align things. And so I haven't had too much issue with noise, but uh, MTIC brake pads, not much to say other than in my experience, they've worked well. So in summary, two millimeter rotors, I think they are a good thing, especially if uh, you do a lot of bike parks, uh, maybe you're a bigger guy uh, or with a bigger bike or that does a lot of braking. I think a two millimeter rotor can really help you help keep your braking system working as it should for longer periods of time. So if you struggle with brake fade or maybe like a wandering bike point on a lever, a la Shimano, um, getting something that will build up heat slower uh, could help minimize a lot of that stuff. In my opinion, if you're looking to easily uh, improve the braking uh, performance of your current brake system before you go out and search for, you know, going from SLX to XTR, spending a whole bunch of money on complete braking systems, I would merely try maybe a different brake pad. Again, like the MTX pads that I like. Galfer is another great pad uh, that makes a lot of pads for a lot of the brake brands out there, or simply just go up in size so uh, not meaning in thickness but you could but like if you're on like the 160 or 180 mil rotors try a 200 or 203 depending on what brand you go with yeah just try uh, maybe a bigger rotor and i'm willing to bet that you would find success um, in your uh, improvements on your braking well hey guys thanks for watching this video if you made it this far i appreciate you um, if you have any questions around two millimeter rotors uh, or this golfer one in particular, MTX brake pads or other brake pads, let me know in the comments. I've tried pretty much every two millimeter rotor there is out there from uh, Galfer, from uh, Magura, from uh, SRAM, uh, you name it. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to answer them as best I can. Again, if you have any questions about the MTX brakes, I have some uh, decent history there as well with these guys. So um, again, uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.